After a long time the Israelites had their first king. But he didn't obey the Lord's instructions. Then the Lord talked to his prophet Samuel to tell Saul. So may the Lord forgive you. Samuel I am so happy that you're here. Why are you so angry you should be celebrating? Because the Lord's instructions were very clear. I did everything he told me to do. Then what is the herd of cattle in my ear? I did everything that the Lord commanded. Destroy everything and everyone leaving none alive. Well we did keep King Agag, but he's going to be executed. And the herding of animals. They were going to be for sacrifice. The Lord requires obedience more than sacrifice. Whatever. What the Lord gives he can take away. Are these God's words or yours? Your descendants would have ruled forever. But today God is forsaking you. No, no, please, Samuel. Just as you have torn my robe, the Lord have torn the kingdom from you and given to a one better than you. No, Lord, please forgive me. Then the Lord spoke to the prophet Samuel. Samuel. Yes, Lord. I have chosen the next king in Bethlehem. Go to find a man by the name of Jesse. One of his sons is chosen. Yes, Lord. Hello. Are you Jesse? Yes. God has chosen one of your sons to be the new king. And Jesse showed his sons to Samuel. And God said none of them would be the king. Do you have another son? Yes, but he's in the back watching my sheep. What's your name, son? My name is David. The Lord has told me that you're going to be the king over all Israel. The Lord. Kneel down. The next day. Eliab, Bernadette, Shema, where are you going? To fight for the people of Israel. Let me come too. Oh wait. Maybe you could come. Maybe we should. Put you at the front of the line and the enemy would die laughing. <laughs> David the king would like you to play for him. The king of Israel would like to meet me. Why? He is troubled. Put on your best robes and go to the palace. And whatever you do, do not talk about Samuel. Yes, father. Your majesty, I'm here to play for you. I just want some peace. Again, boy, thank you. If it pleases the king, it pleases me. Meanwhile, at the battle, now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle, and were gathered together at Shok, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Shok and Azekah, in Epizdamim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together, and pitched by the valley of Elah, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath, of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had an helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight, 
and he cried against the armies of Israel and said, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine, and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me, and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him, and kill him, then shall ye be our servants, and serve us. Every day for forty days Goliath went out on the battlefield day and night, asking who will fight him but no one wanted to fight him while Jesse calls for David and says to him, Take now for thy brethren and depart this parched corn, and these ten loaves, and run to the camp to thy brethren, and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. And David rose up early in the morning, and left the sheep with a keeper, and took, and went, as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench, as the host was going forth to the fight, and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage, and ran into the army, and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and were sore afraid. Have ye seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, and it shall be, that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great treasures, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? If no one will fight this giant, then I will. Every day we hear him. Is there anyone here to fight this warrior? He wins the battle, wins the war. My lord, someone is here to challenge the Philistine giant. He himself is a giant. Among sheep. David the shepherd boy. <laughs> My lord I will fight this giant. Fight him you're just a boy. What can one child do? What can one child not do when that child goes with God? No it's too risky. My lord. The lord has already delivered me from bears and from lions. If the lord can deliver me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear. Then the lord's going to deliver me from the hands of this Philistine. You stand alone. No god will be with me. As you wish bring me my arm and put it on David. I could barely pick up the sword and the shield is much too heavy for me. Alright, but at least take my shield. The Lord will be my shield. David chose five smooth stones from a dry riverbed. And went to meet Goliath of Gath. When the Philistines saw him he laughed at David knowing he was just a boy. Am I a dog, that thou comest to me with staves? Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord serveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass, when the Philistine arose, and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted, and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag, and took thence a stone, and slang it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine, and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. 
Therefore David ran, and stood upon the Philistine, and took his sword, and drew it out of the sheath thereof, and slew him, and, cu and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and of Judah arose, and shouted, and pursued the Philistines, until thou come to the valley, and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Sharpraim, even unto Gath, and unto Ekron. And that's how God used the ordinary kid to save his people.